Well guys, what a day it is for Disney stock out there. Congrats to all you Disney shareholders out there. Disney's making a massive move up today, over 10% up over $12 a share today. And on the flip side, we have Netflix. And uh, Netflix not having such a good day, down over 4% today, down around $15 per share. In terms of Disney, this is the strongest performance the stock has had in a long, long time. Like if you just go back at a five year chart, this is the best day Disney has had in five years, okay? So what is the big news and what is my opinion on this and why does this matter to Netflix in a big way, okay? Let's start getting into this. So Disney just announced the Disney Plus streaming service, which will obviously be a competitor to anything that's a video streaming service such as uh, Netflix, okay? It's free of advertising and customers pay a monthly fee to access a vast library of Disney and Fox's, because once again, Disney just uh, bought Fox, Fox's legacy content, as well as new exclusive TV shows, movies, and documentaries. Disney's other streaming services, Hulu and Sports Focus ESPN Plus, will run on the same tech platform so you can subscribe easily to them with the same password, same credit card info. Disney plans for all three to be individual subscriptions, but it said it likely to bundle them for a discount at some point in time, okay? So new streaming service Disney's coming out with. This is a straight competitor to anything that basically has your, your time and attention and you have to pay a subscription to that, okay? Disney Plus will include all of Disney's family friendly and much of its mass audience fare. It'll have content from Disney products Proper, Marvel, Lucasfilm, Pixar, and National Geographic. And outside of those traditional categories, it will offer 30 seasons of The Simpsons, okay? Now, if you're hoping to get this service, you're gonna have to still wait a little while. It's not gonna launch until the fall time, all right? Around November 12th is when this will supposedly launch. The timing is strategically smart. For one, Disney Plus can piggyback on the marketing for all of Disney's big budget films being released this holiday season. Frozen 2 hits theaters November 22nd, and Star Wars hits theaters on December 20th. So this isn't like something that's just like available today or tomorrow or something, but it's gonna be available in the fall. So we're looking at somewhere around six to seven months before we can actually, you know, end up getting this service. But a lot of people are, are very, very excited. I'm seeing a lot of reactions on social media and it looks like Disney really hit a home run with a lot of the pricing and the content and things like that, okay? How much will it cost? So the, the cost for the service is gonna be $6.99 per month or $69.99 per year. So basically you can get a discount if you buy it on a yearly subscription. It's price undercuts Netflix, obviously in a huge way, which charges around $13 per month. Disney CFO Christine McCarthy hinted Disney Plus pricing may rise as a service advances, obviously, calling the $7 a month fee an initial price. The company also said it is likely to bundle Disney Plus with Hulu and ESPN Plus, offering a discount if you subscribe to two or three of the streaming options, obviously that would make a lot of logical sense there. And as far as pricing long-term on this service, I can definitely see them going up substantially. So if initially, yeah, at $6.99, then it will go to $7.99 in a year or so, then it will go to $9.99 a few years later, then it will go to $12.99 and $15.99, and eventually, you know, uh, five, 10 years from now, it'll probably be a $19.99 service or something like that, uh, which will still be in a lot of people's price bracket even if this went to something like $19.99, that's still in a vast amount of people's price brackets. Yeah, it's not $6.99 where it's in almost every single person's price bracket, but even at $19.99, that's still a vast majority of Disney, you know, consumers can afford $19.99 a month, even if that was to go to that, you know, let's say five years from now, seven years from now, okay? Disney will most likely disappear from Netflix by late 2019. And this is obviously awful news for Netflix, okay? Netflix is in a position where you know, uh, they, they need other people's content essentially. Now Netflix has some programs that are that are good, that they're, you know, are original Netflix programs, but let's be completely honest, the vast majority of Netflix content is not Netflix proprietary content, okay? And when you lose someone like Disney, having all these different Disney products on your streaming service, that's just a massive, massive loss because the D the Disney products is what, you know, a lot of the kids wanna watch and <laughs> the heck, even a lot of the grownups wanna watch. So when they all of a sudden take away from your platform, say, you know, we're not gonna 
going to show our programming on your platform anymore. You just lost a lot of the value you were giving to the consumers. So this is a huge negative for Netflix. You know, basically you're going to start in the back half of this year and, and go into future years that people are going to say, well, now if I want Disney content, I got to go with Disney Plus. So Netflix just became a lot less relevant to me if you're someone that cares about anything Disney related content, Fox related content, things like that. So that's obviously very, very, very bad news for Netflix overall, okay? Disney Plus will be the only place you can stream all of Disney's theater released movies, starting with Captain Marvel at launch and the rest of its 2019 slate later on. Frozen 2, for example, will be streamable on the service next summer after its theater release in November. Disney Plus will also be the house for the entire film libraries of Pixar, Star Wars, and its signature series, and the Disney vault lines of classic hand-drawn animated movies, okay? And of course, the company is developing a big slate of original exclusive shows and movies for the service, like this, this is a major competitive threat. When you just think about the amount of content Disney has that people actually, you know, like genuinely care about. That's a big thing. It's not just about, oh yeah, I have so many movies and services to offer you on this streaming service on <laughs> Netflix and uh, much of it no one cares about, okay? The, you know, Netflix has some very good content that people really genuinely care about. But let's be completely honest, most of the stuff on Netflix people do not give a rat's crap about. However, However, when you think about something like Disney, we have hundreds of millions, if not billions of people all around the world that genuinely love this type of content, okay? So th this is a massive, massive competitive threat. And obviously this is not just the latest competitive threat. Apple TV just announced that they're gonna basically be coming out with a streaming service here in a few months. And they've got tons and tons of big names lined up for that to produce content for them. So Netflix is really in a position of, of they're, they're way behind in this game, okay? Netflix is trying to create, spend all this money creating all this exclusive content and whatnot. Guess what Disney has figured out? Disney figured out how to make great content like 100 years ago, okay? Disney makes nothing but great content and they are the best at making great content, okay? That's why every time you go to the theaters, it's Disney movies and they gross these ridiculous amounts of money. They just have figured that out a long, long time ago. That's what Disney does best, okay? And Apple's strategy is very intelligent. Apple's bringing in, you know, all these brilliant in minds like Steven Spielberg and Oprah and all these different people that are, are great at creating different types of content and thinking about different types of content and they're bringing in them in house and kind of you know hey you run with this you know we'll put that on the platforms and whatnot so Netflix is I, I'm just looking at Netflix and I'm like this is in a very 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 tough spot okay the competition is coming in mass I've been talking about this guys I've been talking about this for over a year now in regards to Netflix the competition is coming Netflix has basically been playing this game the of streaming service, you know, a pay streaming service by themselves. Now all of a sudden you have Apple coming in in the fall, you have Disney, the main competitor coming in, in the fall, and it makes you think, wow, what, where is Netflix gonna be at this? And then on top of that, you have Amazon showing more and more and more ambition with the Amazon Prime product around kind of buying up content and whatnot. Amazon is supposed to spend somewhere around roughly $6 billion on original content this year. Year, okay, that's a massive, massive amount of money. So you have Disney coming in with with literally the the they have the best content, the, the the most content in the world that people actually care about. Okay, it's them and and you know no one's even close to Disney in terms of the content people actually care about. Okay, then you have Apple coming in. They're going to spend billions on content to make sure their streaming service is great. Obviously, Apple just passed Spotify in terms of subscribers, you know, paid subscribers in the United States. I'm sure Apple wants to pass up Netflix in three or five years. And then you have Amazon and Jeff Bezos over there spending billions of dollars a year on content. They want to be a, a, you know, a big player in this space. So you go from Netflix basically a couple years ago, they have no competition, to all of a sudden the back half of this year, they're going to have mass competition starting, okay? And it's gonna start getting real ugly in 2020, 2021, and so on and so forth, okay? And so you look at Netflix here, you know, a company that's priced, even after today's drop, still 150 plus billion dollar market cap, still a company that has a trailing P of 130 on it, a forward P of 55, and I can't figure out why anybody in their right mind would wanna buy Netflix stock right now. I cannot figure it out for the life of me. Why anybody would wanna stick money in Netflix Netflix at this uh, point in time. You're basically hoping and praying that somehow they can beat Disney, they can 
beat Amazon and they can beat Apple and I just don't see that. Apple doesn't get beat almost ever, okay? Oh, look at almost every single thing Apple does, they do it successfully and they usually, you know, come out as like the top dog, at least in terms of, you know, making the most money from that thing, okay? So Apple's gonna be a main competitor in here. Look what the Apple did with Apple Music. Now they have more subscribers, you know, paid subscribers in the US than Spotify, okay? That's in three years. Look what Apple just did, okay? Then you have Disney, the, the content everybody cares about. I like like there's a there's a finite amount of money, right? Some people can afford to you know have Netflix. They can afford to have Disney Plus. They can afford to have Apple you know Plus or whatever it's going to be called. They can afford to have Amazon Prime. They can afford to have cable and satellite and all these different things. Okay, that's a very select amount of people that have like unlimited funds to just you know buy up all the content. Most folks have like ten dollars to maybe thirty dollars a month to spend on these type of you know paid subscribe uh, you know streaming services and whatnot. So with with a, you know a limited amount of money. Let's 10, 20 bucks a month, somewhere around there. What do you end up picking? Do you pick Netflix or do you pick Disney Plus or do you pick Apple Plus or, or do you just have your Amazon Prime? What do you end up picking with that? I can tell you Netflix is going to be at a massive disadvantage starting next year. And uh, I think, you know, people are going to start actually canceling their Netflix subscriptions, at least in the developed markets, and start going with some of these other platforms and at least trying them out. And if they have success with those and they really like them, they, they might not get Netflix or they might be in a position where maybe they used to have Netflix year around, but now maybe they just get Netflix like like one month out of the year or two months out of the year, which is obviously a huge loss for Netflix because you had somebody that was signed up using your, your platform year around. All of a sudden now they use it for one or two months because they're all they're trying out all these other streaming services and they're like, oh, this one's got really good content now. Let me sign up for Apple. Oh, oh, you know, Apple's got nothing going on right now. Let me cancel that. Let me sign up for Disney. I want to watch, I want to binge watch a ton of content on Disney. Oh, Disney's kind of getting boring now. Let me stop that. Let me go for Netflix. So Netflix was in this like monopoly and now they just literally like almost overnight they're about to have just a mass competition so i can't figure out why anybody in their right mind would want to buy netflix stock right now other than hoping and praying they somehow beat everybody that's tough that's a tough proposition guys disney knocked out of the ballpark with this disney absolutely came in with a great price a great amount of content um there's going to be a very successful product i don't know how successful but i would expect within the first like two years for them to have tens of millions of paid subscribers Subscribers to this tens of millions is going to be a, a highly successful thing. So we'll have to see how it all works out. Anyways, I want to hear your guys' opinion in that comment section about Disney, about you know the Apple news service, about Netflix. I would love to hear from you guys as always. Thank you for watching and have a great day.